Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. It's always nice to see each and every one of you. You come out and you know what? If you notice every Monday, I say it's a beautiful Monday. That's because it's a beautiful Monday. <laughs> Here we are again. My name, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mary D. Welch. I am the host of Mary D. Show. And we're so happy to have you here this morning, or this, I said this morning, this afternoon. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat today. Today, we have an Olympian with us. An Olympian. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. This, this is some, this is one of the, if there's ever a hard, um, you can say a hard mountain to climb, or the, the when you reach the peak of what it is to be uh, someone as um, high as Olympian, that is, that's just, it's insurmountable, the odds that are, are, are against you. And I'm going to read you uh, some of the information about this wonderful gentleman that's joined us today. Now, first of all, I've been, not only did I, let me, let me just throw out these apologies. Now, I misspelled his name. So I do, he knows I apologize for that immensely. I hate misspelling people's names. I do. But he, I did, he knows like, how I feel about that. So, um, but I do want to still introduce you to him. His name is, is, is Reynaldo. I said it's wrong. It's not Ronaldo. It's Reynaldo Brown. And he's a native of Los Angeles, California. He attended elementary school at the Harbor City and Compton areas. Then Willowbrook Junior High School, Compton High School in Compton. Then on to uh, Cal Poly St. Louis Obispo or SLO. He majored in communications. In addition to that, he was the first high schooler to jump seven feet. At the age of 17 and as a junior in high school, he competed in the 1968 Olympic Games held in Mexico City, where he took fifth place. He was the youngest member of that men's Olympic team. Just the thought of all this is, is amazing to me. He turned, after he, after he returned to Compton High School where he graduated in June of 1969, he then qualified to participate as an alternative in the 1972 Olympic Games held in Munich, Germany. He also competed in the 1971 Pan Am Games. He set the small college record for a height of seven, seven feet, four inches, four and a half inches in 1973. Ronaldo. Reynaldo dominated the American collegiate high jump scene in the early 1970s. He's ranked number two in the world. Just think of that, ladies. Number two in the entire world. In addition to that, he accomplished something that many Division II athletes could only dream of. He competed in the Olympics not once, but twice. He competed in the NCAA championships four times. And possibly the most remarkable note is that Reynaldo won the high jump in the NC2A Division II championships in 1971 and, 19, and 1973. And later went on to win Division I championships in each of those same seasons. At this time, at this time, Division II champs were allowed to compete at the higher division. All accolades for the Los Angeles native included all league, all conference, all American honors, and a collegiate athlete of the year award. He was inducted into the high school hall of fame at Mount Sac Hall of Fame, Cal Poly SLO or, or St. Louis Obispo Hall of Fame in 1995, the African American Ethnic Sports Hall of Fame of March of 2009. He is also a member of the president's physical fitness program. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you today Reynaldo Brown. Are you there, Reynaldo? I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm reading that bio and I am just like, Lord. I mean, those accolades and those awards are phenomenal. They're phenomenal. Just to, I mean, to achieve any of those is phenomenal. Well, I can't, you. I mean, really, because I'm, I'm a, those that don't know, I'm a former athlete, I guess you could say. I played volleyball and basketball. Never, never to the levels of the <laughs> that you have, um, aspired, not aspired to, but accomplished. And I'm just sitting up here, I'm in awe. I'll be honest with you. I am in well, awe, sir, you. of, of your accomplishments. I know um, I did receive a call from Dumas Martin. He was the first one to tell me I spelled your name incorrectly. 
but he also told me how that as you were doing doing all of these things, how much the community admired you and they were supportive of you and all those. He was he was he really wanted me to know who you were as a person. So my as they say, my hats off to you, but my honor to you um, in all that you've done. And I mean that. Thank you. Yep. So tell us, how did you get started? How did you get started? Uh, well, you know, it was, you know, growing up in Compton um, and, you know, back in the day, you know, um, you know, we, I grew up, you know, of course, listening to uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm mm -hmm. X and you right. know, all the big leaders back in the day. And, you know, the word was uh, you can kind of be you, you can be whatever you want to be, you know, if you work right. hard and mm -hmm. focus and concentrate. And I remember sitting on the curb with some friends that one night, and I think the 64 Olympic Games were going on, you know. And mm -hmm. I've always been a, when I was at Willowbrook Junior High School, I decided, you know, I wanted to do something because I was tall. And I couldn't mm -hmm. figure out what it was, and I knew it was probably be basketball because at that time, Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell was my idols, you know, mm -hmm. playing basketball. But I didn't know a thing about basketball or, you know, mm -hmm. the rules and regulations or anything. And so I had to be taught, you know. So I went to Willowbrook Junior High School, got in, you know, got in good with the uh, coach, uh, Jim Newman, who was the coach at that time. Mm -hmm. And Jim saw something in me that, I didn't believe in either, you know, but he said, hey, son, I see you have some raw talk, uh, talent. And if you work with me, mm -hmm. and I said to myself, well, okay, well, I'll work with you too, you know, right. because I've always been an observer and he decided, okay, let's learn the uh, techniques of everything I have to do, you know, playing basketball. Because when I when I was in that gym class, I, you know, they wanted me to play basketball and I grabbed the ball and started running with it. And I, but I put it in the basket, but it was wrong, you know, because I was traveling, you know, I didn't know the rules. Right. So everybody laughing and what have you. I'm, I'm wondering what they're laughing about, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't bounce the ball or nothing. I just ran and threw it up there and went in. You know? mm -hmm. And they said, no, no, you got to bounce it. And, you know, you got other, you know, other players and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. So anyway, he taught me the fundamentals of basketball. I focus on that in the seventh grade uh -huh. um, in gym class because the only thing I can do was high jump at that time. I mean, uh, track and field. Mm -hmm. and then when track and field came out, you know, I um, I saw those guys over there high jumping. And I said, oh, well, maybe I can do that. You know, and the story behind that is the coach didn't really teach me how to high jump. My father taught me how to high jump. He was a it was sort of like a uh, negative thing to turn positive, you know. So my father, you know, one day the sister, we went to bed that night and they, we didn't wash the dishes. Dad got us up, you know, and then he was roughing up my sister and, you know, talking about washing dishes and what have you. So I'm in the seventh grade and I was just about his height. And I didn't like him pushing them around, pushing her around, right? So I'm standing there with my other three sisters and, uh, two brothers and mm -hmm. I don't know, I was just boiling and every time he'd shake us. And I said, no, I got to do something. So when my mother said, Landis, don't push him. And then he pushed her and that was it. Man. So I just pushed him back. He said, he looked at me in his eyes, you know, back in that, those days, they said, ah, oh, I bought you in this world, I'll take you out. And right. I got scared and we lived in a shotgun house in Compton. So I said, okay, the only thing I can do is run out that back door. So we were standing in that hall there. So when he tried to grab at me, I ran, pushed the screen door open, and I was running so fast, when I got out in the yard, it was a gate, I mean, a fence, you know, uh -huh. and you had to really think quick, I had to think quick at that time, and I said, the only way I'm going to, for him not to touch me, is I'm going to have to go over this fence, Right. so he's, I felt his uh, hand on my back, and just as it felt my hand on my back, I went over the fence, he crashed into the fence, you know, and and, you know, that was my first experience of uh, high jumping right there. So when I got to Willowbrook, my coach asked me if I ever jumped. I said, yeah. And I thought about jumping over that fence. But my father, he got hurt that night. And uh, But his his main thing was not to get me when I went back home. He was just more amazed how I got over the fence without him grabbing me. You know? Right. And was it How high was the fence? 
Uh, the fence, it was a, you know, like a regular, I don't know, four and a half foot fence in the, you know, those little fence they have in the backyard. Okay. The yards. Uh huh. Yeah, it was one of those little wire fence, you know. One but you, yards, the uh, way you went fence. over it, it was a natural instinct. It was just a natural, the timing, mm -hmm. everything, the speed, the timing, everything was just perfect, you know, for me oh to just my. get over that fence, you know. Oh, when my. I got on the other side, I was on my feet, you know, so. I okay. A, a step, you know? And it really, but it wasn't, a, it was really out of fear. <laughs> it, was out of fear. it was out of fear of getting over that fence, yeah. <laughs> and I just want to show you, if you, when you're afraid, you can almost do anything you want to do. Yeah. And I did that, and that was my thing that, okay, I want to be, you know, when I saw these guys high jumping, mm -hmm. and that excited me, and I want to be a, he said, I'm going to teach you the techniques of high jump. Because uh, when mm. I when he um, asked me to jump, that's where I jumped over the high jump bar like I did over the fence. He said, no, right. you have to learn another way, technique. Okay. He taught me that technique, you know. And yeah. once he taught me that technique, then I mm -hmm. continued to work on it and perfect it. And, you know, just, you know, things just took off from that at Willowbrook Junior High School. Oh, so right. I broke, the junior, I broke the seventh grade record, which was 5-2 or something like that. Then the eighth grade record, which was five, six. And then when the ninth grade came, mm -hmm. I was well into it. And uh -huh. I, jumped five, I jumped six, five in the ninth grade, you know. Wow. And that's well, when what? I decided, okay, I want to make the Olympic team. I want to be an Olympian. You know? That's when you decided that? That's when I decided that, yeah, because my coach was telling me, he was saying there was guys in college that wasn't jumping that height. You know, and here I am jumping six, five in the ninth grade. So I figured I can get better, hoping I can get better. And I knew I could get better. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he just told me it's gonna be a lot of hard work and sacrifice and whatever right. concentration and whatever. And I had it, you know, because all I was I was just in school. So, you know, all I had to do was just go home, wake up, go to school, get my grades and that kind of stuff. Right. And and work out. And well, I, I can I, I'm a, you know, I'm listening to you. He's telling you you're in in middle school or in high school, and you're out jumping. Yeah, in middle school. You're in middle school, and you're already jumping higher than people that are in, that are in college. Yes. I can't even imagine that, because you were how you were what 14, 13, I know, 14. I was 15. I still had that article that they wrote. I jumped at it. I think it was in the Coliseum. They had a uh, big track meet there. For the district, you know, mm -hmm. and they had in there uh, youth jumps six five, you know, fifteen years old, and you know, blah blah blah. But I still have yeah. an article and all that, yeah. Because I know too, they don't just put anything in there; they have to. It has to all be documented. You're right. It, was you're documented. At, yeah. it has to be. I know. Um, I was. I wasn't in track and field, but I would always. I'd be a timekeeper. So oh, really. I did. And I would always, you know, just keep keep time and write the scores down, that, that kind of thing. So that's the my that was my, you know, into the track and field. But I was never the one to run around the track or do anything like that or do any law. None of none of that part. But I always admired people that did. I always admired. Mm -hmm. I, I just was I like being out there. I think what I like about track and field was because you're outside. It was just yeah, that. that was me. I was an outdoors. I was an mm -hmm. outside person. You know, loved the, you know, the, the weather didn't even bother me. You know, I loved okay. the heat, and I had to work out in the heat. And you know, even today, you know, I'm out here in Victorville, and mm -hmm. you know, the, everybody's complaining about how hot it is. I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell. Well, when did you start? So you were like you. Like I know we were talking about you're the youngest on the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. That wasn't when you were in middle school. That was when you were in high school. Yeah, when I got to high school, when I got to Compton High School, then Willie Williams, he was my coach at Compton High School. And he was another great coach who went to San Jose State. He was a sprinter. Mm -hmm. He knew his stuff really good. And he continued to work with me and teach me more technique and, you know, more focus and concentration and all that. And, uh, you know, what he taught me really helped me. 
Right. And, uh, you know, and I kept telling him, I said, well, coach, I want to, I want to make the Olympic team, you know, and he Sorry said, well, heck, I went to San Jose state and I was with one of the best runners and I didn't make it, you know, because there was people better than him. Right. And I said, well, coach, I said, all you got to do is just work with me and tell me what I need to do. I said, I'm going to make it, you know, I said, I'll make the team, you know, and at that time too, I didn't want to, you know, and I don't, I'm not saying, getting a medal and all that is, is, you know, I'm not putting down that, but, you know, at that time too, Muhammad Ali, you know, he had, uh, you know, had his problems and I heard him say that, uh, you know, going to the Olympics wasn't a, you know, it was a great thing, but wasn't what he thought it was. So I remember him saying he's going to throw his medal away. And so I thought at that time, okay, if he's going to throw his medal away, then, you know, and then I think mainly because, you know, blacks at that time was not, you know, you can be an Olympian or whatever, but you still didn't get the jobs. You still didn't get the help that you needed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were still put down at that time. So right. I made up in my mind, all I want to do is just be an Olympian. I don't want to win a gold. I don't want to win a medal, period. All I want to do is just be an Olympian, you know. And, well, I just, I, you know, I'm not, mm -hmm. and I did that. Right. And I had a strategy for that. I said mm -hmm. that um, all I want to do is stay in the top five, in the top five of the uh, competitions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because two people are going to mess up and that always happened. And I was either first, second or third. And I mm -hmm. knew that they, you know, I had to ask my coach how many they take on the Olympic team. He said the first three. And so I figured I can be in the top three. <laughs> and, you know, it worked out for me. That was my uh -huh. strategy, stay in the top five. So, and, uh, so all through my jumping career, I didn't care about winning. Mm -hmm. All I care about was jumping because I loved it so much, you know. Oh. I was even winning when I didn't want to win, you know. I mean, because I was having fun, you know. And I wasn't mm -hmm. trying to beat nobody. <laughs> and so when I got to, you know, when we got to the Olympic Games, when it time to make the team, I asked him, how many trials do we have to go? Mm -hmm. He said, there's three. Mm -hmm. And okay, if it's three trials, you know, it was one in Lake Tahoe. The last one was in Lake Tahoe, but I think we had one in Sacramento and one in um, Miami. And the last right. one was in Lake Tahoe. Uh huh. Lake Tahoe. And we stayed up there in Lake Tahoe for about two months to train. Okay. So my strategy was just to be in the top five to make the team also. So when, you know, make a long story short, when we had the trials to make the team, mm -hmm. I took second. And, uh, you know, in the trials, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I was in the top three there. Right. And my thing was to stay in the top five when we got to the Olympic Games, you know. And as we were jumping mm -hmm. and, you know, I was looking around to see how many people were left. And I looked around and it was five of us left. And so that was my medal. You know, I'm still <laughs> in high school. I have to go back to finish Compton High School, you know. And, you know, and I want to go to college and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. you know, I stayed in the top five all the way through. So I wasn't trying to win a medal. Right. And I think even if I could have won a medal, I don't think I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I didn't want to win a medal. You know? Well, you know, too, things have changed. I think yeah. um, that was during a very turbulent, not, not that this isn't a turbulent time, tell you the truth. Oh, yeah. But this is, it, it, doesn't this remind you of the 60s? I don't well, know about it, it's, You know, like they say, history repeats itself. History repeats and itself. And we're going back to the same things, you know, the the protesting and, you know, all the stuff that's happening now. You know, the only reason we didn't really hear about it as much is because of the media. You know, the same right. things were happening. But it's more, mm -hmm. you, people can see it more now, you know, because right. of you know, the media and what happened. But back then, it was like scarce, you know, and people, they didn't put it in the paper as much as they should have. Right. But, you know, yeah, there was a lot of things going on, you know. And, uh, and well, you know, yeah. we got to Mexico City, we mm -hmm. knew about all this stuff going on. And our thing was to protest at Mexico City. You right. Know, and nobody knew about it. You know, we right. had a uh, organized um, meeting. We had organized meetings, you know, we went to. And we was going to protest it because we was tired of, you know, blacks being put down and, you know, we weren't getting the jobs. You know, like, you, like you said, the same thing that's happening now, you know. And so when we got to Mexico City, um, 
it didn't work out like we thought it was going to work out, you know, because somehow the press found out where we was going to, there was going to be a protest. Well, I know the one we saw with it, that, that um, and I meant like we had talked to, a little while ago about that. Mm -hmm. Even I'll, I now truthfully, I remember that. But one thing I remember, I thought they had made, had decided when they stepped up on those blocks to do it. Never once did my ever, did I ever think that that had been organized. Until well, you- It was organized. And yeah. uh, the only reason it didn't play out the way it should have played out. Uh, well, it did, you know, Tommy and John, they did their thing. But it was so much other stuff going on like in Mexico City that nobody knew about. They had killed like 3,400 kids, you know, at the University of Mexico that nobody knew about. What? Yeah, because they had protests. Uh, the protest for the university was that after the Olympics was over, mm -hmm. they were going to give all the um, housing to the poor. And they decided not to do it because the Olympics went so well. They said, oh, we're going to turn them into condos and give them to the rich. And wow. so they started protesting. And they didn't want the protesters to be out there when the United States came. Uh -huh. team came so they shot them all. You know, and what? This, you can look that up. Yeah, they killed them. They killed, uh, they killed a bunch of students that day. I never knew this. Yeah, it's, it's in the books. You can look oh, my goodness. Well, I can tell you this is a... The and kind of and John did the fist. They did right. that for the cover up. You know, they covered up all the killings. What what John and Tommy did? You know? Because it became what they did became the only thing. That's the, honestly that's the only thing I remember from the Olympic Games in Mexico mm -hmm. City. I don't remember anything else. Who won what? Except mm -hmm. that those two men stood on that. Truthfully, that's my only. That's my only. Um, for that's like seared in my mind. Right. It's what happened with the with the two when the one had on one glove and the other had the other glove. I I still remember it. Yes, yes. And that's the only thing I remember. I never knew about this part of it, of anybody losing their life. I don't think I ever recall that. Well, they didn't want that to be known, so that's why they covered it all up. You know, with John and Tommy's thing. That was other protests. You know, other protests, uh -huh. but they made that the biggest thing. And it took off and it really hurt those guys for a long time, 32 years of suffering, you know. Oh, and my they, goodness. You know, they went through a bunch of stuff that was really bad. I'm going to go on and read. We have Gwendolyn. Hi, Gwendolyn. That's my cousin. Hi, Gwendolyn. And we have Henrietta. That's my cousin. Hi, Henrietta. <laughs> And they and they left comments. I like to thank you, ladies. I mean so much when you guys leave comments. And this is what Gwendolyn just left. She said, "I hadn't heard of the murder of the Mexican student protest." She said, "The first took the headlines and covered up." She goes, oh, "Covered this up." Oh my, she did, and that, that's how I feel. She said, "This is educational. This is definitely educational to me. This is the first time I've ever heard this in life. In life, I've never knew any of this." Like I said, they want to cover it up, but it's it's in the record books now. You can go look it up, you know. Wow. And, you know, and then I'm thinking, okay, I'm 17. You know, I got to go back to high school and finish my senior year. And then I want to go to college. So I didn't want to get blackballed. So I had to do a side. My silent protest was being with John. And I tell you, I, I, was, I, was, I was coming back from eating. And I saw the press, you know, harassing John. Mm -hmm. And John, you know, nobody else was with him. I think just he and his wife and, you know, maybe a couple other people were with him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he saw me and he said, Ray, come with me. <laughs> okay. All right. I, saw, I said, okay. But I said I was going to keep my mouth shut. You know, I wasn't going to say anything. Right. And it all worked out really good because even when I was standing there with John and the press and all that, mm -hmm. nobody asked me my name. Nobody said anything to me, and I, you know, and it's in the, uh, it's in the um, documentary. What's the name of the documentary? I think it's Fist of uh, Freedom or something. Fist of Freedom. Okay. I'm standing back there with my black coat on, you know, maybe looking like everybody. I had a lot of calls, because I didn't even know the, the, the movie was out, you know. People had called me, Ray, is that you? I said, 
Yeah, that is me. <laughs> yeah, looking like a black panther with leather coat and all that. You know? and oh, you said you didn't know you didn't even know you was in it. I didn't even know I was in it, you know. Oh my goodness. So my thing was just to stick with John and that was my silent protest of uh showing that I was all for what was going on, you know. Oh my and we have um Tracy. Tracy Martz said, Hi Pops, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tracy. You know, I know that feeling. And happy Father's Day. I, I didn't get happy oh, Father's thank Day to you. you. Yes. Tracy. Oh, Tracy. Yes. I could I know that that's a proud, that's a proud daughter there. She's a daddy's oh. girl. Oh, yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming by, Tracy. And you're like I am. You're gonna support. She goes, hi. And then we have, oh, we have, let me say Tracy. Here we go. And put your high up there. And we have another comment. This is from Elaine Wilson. She said, that's no different from present day cover-ups. That's why we need this knowledge. There you right. go, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. And Elaine is such a supporter. She is very strong in the community. She helps provide scholarships to our students to go to college. So okay. I'm going to, okay. she's going to come on the show one day. We're going to get you on here, Elaine. <laughs> Yes, good job, Elaine. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But I'm going to tell, like I said, I'm sitting here in awe of learning something. And I was a history teacher, and I don't ever recall, ever, ever, ever recall hearing about any type of this happening, you know. And you said 3,000, didn't you say? Yeah, 3,400, actually, you know. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot they of people. Probably, they probably lowered the number because they still don't want people to know about them because I guess they don't know where they're buried and that kind of stuff, you know. Oh, my yeah, goodness. They made a square out of it, you know. Like I never heard it. Shot, you know? Okay, Tracy wants us to know that there, that uh, there's three of us. Thank you, Tracy. I told you she's a daddy girl. I know about daddy's girls. <laughs> yeah, Sean, Tracy, Vivalin. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. We appreciate you. We really do. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for stopping by and supporting your dad. Thank you. But I just, I really, oh, Elaine said, thank you both. You're welcome, Elaine. I try to make sure if you guys put comments up, you can bet. I'm going to try and make sure they come on that screen and we have a chance to, to respond to them because it really means a lot. Thank you, all of you that put comments up. I am, I know I'm listening to you. Okay. We know you were on the Olympic team and, and 1968. Yeah. But when I'm reading your bio, it said you made two Olympic teams. Yeah, the uh, the 72 games. I, you know, in the um, in the finals, they uh, I I I took I took fourth. Okay. So I was an alternate. You know, okay. in the uh, to make the team. And so it did, uh, one of the guys did get hurt, and they called me over to uh, Munich, Germany. You know, to um, just in case the guy. Decided not to jump, but he jumped hurt. So anyway, they called me there, and I was at the, you know, the village and the whole bit, you know. So mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to jump, but I was there, you know. As part okay. Of the team okay. As an alternate, yes. I, I can tell you, I'm just I'm in awe of all of it, just because I like see I've been the person that watches, you know, just from afar type thing. Mm -hmm. But to to actually be someone who's even been there and been in the Olympic Games and went through you know opening ceremony, closing ceremony, that's that's I watch everything, but I yeah. Yeah, I never really that's amazing, you know. It is ceremonies, you know. Really it great. is that's what I mean, just to be a part of all that. It's yeah. and and every time we have the games, it's history. Yes, you are literally watching history because. That what it took to get there, and that whatever they you do at the or you and, and all the other Olympians do, that'll never happen again. Yeah, that's it. No, For, that's why you know I was looking at it yesterday. The guys and the girls that made the team, mm -hmm. and the crying. You know, you just be. I mean, after all that hard work. Yeah. And you know, you you get into your finals, and you finally you know take first, second, or third. Yeah, because you know it can be anybody to get in there. That's but, right. I mean, the, the harder you work, the more you're going to accomplish what you want. And right. And you can see why they were crying because now all the pressure's off them. You know. Yes. And they just feel so good. You know. It's like well, the work. You know, it's like yeah. um, you know starting your own business from scratch, yeah. and you finally got yeah. some. You know, one of the banks loaned you the the big bucks that you needed. You know. Right. 
and you just, I mean, you just can't believe it, you know. Um, wow. It is, it, I mean, just the thought of it is phenomenal to me. The thought of it, and I, you know, just the, um, like you said, the, the trials. And, and then when you were, when you were competing, I think if I'm not, if I understand it correctly, now it is so you can, you can be paid by sponsors to help you yes. get ready for the games. At the time you were competing, that wasn't available. No, that wasn't happening. No, no, they wasn't, uh, they wasn't sponsoring, you know, uh, like they do now. They give you shoes and, mm -hmm. you know, uniforms and that kind of stuff. But we had a um, president who uh, he, they watched you closely. If you got anything, they was looking to suspend you, you know. Oh. So you had to really play it, uh, you know, just be really cool with what you do, you know, and how you do right. it. Well, and, I know uh, two other countries, even though the United States did not believe in that, in the, um, did not believe in, in, in athletes being supported. So your family, friends, everybody had to support you. In other countries, they were paying their athletes to compete. Yeah, Russia and uh, East Germany, yes. And, and, they, and they was using, you know, the steroids and all that stuff, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, a few of the countries got busted for doing it, you know, but not all of them, you know. Right. So, okay. And we knew about that. We knew about it, you know. So all we can do is just, you know, do our natural thing and just compete against it, you know. And, and in most cases, in 68, it worked because... You know, 68 was probably the, uh, yeah, probably the best Olympic team that I hear from people saying. And we won more medals in 68 than any other Olympic team has ever done. I um, never knew that. Yeah, and that was it, that, the Mexico City team, or that the Olympic team of, Me the, of Mexico City. Right. I we never, I didn't know that. More medals than our team. Okay. I tell, well, see, that's a, a lot to be proud of. Medals, period. Just the medals in general, that, that's, the, that's been the most medals that the United States ever won or any country. Right. Was 60, 1968. Yes. And, I know, just, like all, I said. We, uh, most of us are still, you know, the ones still around. Uh, we all still talk to each other. And, you know, we have different events and what have you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're probably, um, probably one of the only Olympic team that really stuck together and still talk and, and do things together. Oh my goodness! I tell you, my if had I been in the Olympics, <laughs> and my 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 sports were uh, volleyball and basketball, and at the okay. time, let me think. Yeah, they were. Those are the two I I really played in. In fact, I played against um, um, her name was Flo, but I can't remember her last name. She played in the Olympics in volleyball, but I don't think it was '68. Um, she was like six. She she passed away, unfortunately. She was six six, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. She was. Do you remember her? Yeah, I do remember her. Yes. Yep. She passed away. Oh my God! Well, probably over fifteen years ago now. Yeah. I think it was like. I remember. A, a, I, remember I remember watching it, you know, because that's what I do. I have to watch all, you know, mm -hmm. volleyball, the swimming, all the other events. Right. Know, and the, and gymnastics and all that. She hit a ball against in my direction. This is the truth. I literally was trying to get out of the way. <laughs> I wasn't trying to return the ball. I was trying to get out of the way. Out of the way of her, huh? Of the, she came up so strong. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, but the, I just love volleyball. I still do. I still love volleyball. So that's still oh, a sport. Yeah. I will just always, always. I love, I love basketball too. But mm -hmm. there's a special love in my heart for volleyball. So. Right. Yeah. But I, I just my sport too, volleyball. You know, I love volleyball too. You know, and uh, but you know, I just stuck with with the high jump. You know, yeah. I love basketball. You know, I could have probably went to you know played in the pros or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, track and field is one of those things that would take you all over the world, and I didn't have to you know be with a coach. I can yeah. go on my own. Yeah. You know, and do whatever I wanted to do. You know, visit yeah. whatever countries I wanted to visit. You know. And it That's wonderful. You know, it was a team sport, but it wasn't wasn't a team sport. You know, you said, right. it was an individual thing. You know, and I like that. And you know, I never, I don't know why, I never put, I never uh, competed in individual sports. My my husband is a tennis player oh, okay. and a basketball player. He does both, so he has a team sport and an individual sport. I don't know why I never got into individual sports. 
you know, like you said, with track and field, it's you in essence competing against you. Yes. Mm -hmm. and That's you know, that was another thing that I, I thought about because I played basketball at the Cal Poly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and I saw how, you know, the uh, you know, it wasn't balanced. You know, the coaches they play who they want to play. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can be one of the top players, but if they like somebody else, you're not getting there. And so I thought about mm -hmm. that. And I said, well, okay, well, I played two years up there, and I said, well, I'm going back to track and field where I can get, get out and do my own thing. You know? Right. And it really worked for me. You know? All right. And there's my husband right now. He goes, he said, hi, babe. So <laughs> he puts his comments in, too. Ah, uh, great. Hello, Oliver. Hi. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> But I can I appreciate his support too because when you're on the on the show and it, it means a lot, it means a lot. Thank you. Uh -huh, for sure. I appreciate you inviting me. You know that was um, I know we had talked about it a few times and never mm -hmm. got around, you know never connected. But you know, yeah, like you say, you got to keep trying and, and it works. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. No, you have to. As as I mentioned to you too, I said I was mentioning on. Um, maybe one day volunteering for the Olympic team, not the, not the Olympic team. I don't want to say that. Volunteer, <laughs> volunteer when they come, they'll be here. Um, it was, no, is it 2028? 20, 2028 is, is when they're coming here, yes. They're coming uh, to LA. To Los Angeles. Okay. And that's when I I was saying that, well, we'll see if maybe I'll do it. I'll volunteer. Because they are, this is what I've learned. That everybody always needs volunteers to do something. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They definitely yeah. need you there. And so I, I would. I, I did it. I did it. I did it for the '84 games, you know. Okay. Yeah, I did it for the '84 games, and uh, you know, I didn't have to, but I, you know, I've been doing volunteer work for as long as I know, you know, since I've been yeah. jumping. So I said, okay, I'll do that. Oh, you know, good. That was a great thing. I really enjoyed it. People didn't want uh -huh. me to do it, you know. They kept saying, oh, uh -huh. "I love you." No, you should be out front doing something, you know. But I'm right. that out front person. I, I like to help and volunteer and do, you know, right. do things that are, you know, for other people. Right. And um, you know, and also did, you know, a lot of things with the uh, Special Olympics too. I volunteered with the Special Olympics, done that. Okay. And they really paid me back too when. Uh, Michelle Obama came, you know, at the Coliseum a few years ago. Uh huh. Let me be the uh, marshal to march in the uh, Special Olympic kids, you know. And that How was nice. A fantastic thing, yes. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that? Did you get a chance to meet her? I didn't get a chance to meet her that day, no. No, I didn't get okay. a chance to meet her. But you knew, but you knew she was there. I knew she was there, yeah. Okay. All right. But see, those kind of experiences are really once in a lifetime. They are, yes. Uh huh. And then I tell you, I've, uh, you know, uh, through sports, it taught me so much and I learned so much, mm -hmm. you know, real life experiences, you know. Right. Sports. Right. And, you know, another thing that we haven't touched on, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm, you know, this Olympian and I'm doing great. But then in 04, I had a kidney. Uh, I went on dialysis. My kidneys failed. Got it. Yeah, so uh, from 04 to 2014, or 2016, I got my uh, kidney transplant. Okay. But to, you know, and that's a whole different story, you know, where I had to pull myself up from being at the bottom to pull myself back to where I am now, you know, just mm -hmm. working in. I learned all, I learned how to get, you know, work through health, through sports, you know, in other words, everything that I did through sports, I did trying to make myself better. And it oh, all worked for me, you know, I took uh -huh. my time, I focused, I did the things that I should have done, mm -hmm. you know, doctors asked me to do, I did them, you know, just like my coaches asked me to do something, I did it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was in no hurry. Uh, and, you know, and I just got myself better, mm -hmm. you know, just start climbing back to health, you know, of course, you know, right. I, you know, I listened to God, you know, I had these messages and, you know, everything just worked out for me, you know, through sports. I learned it all through sports. You know? Now that was so, due to, uh, like, for was it polycystic kidneys? Was it due to, to high blood pressure on your kidneys? Yeah, it was, uh, I, went, I went to, uh, it was in Senegal. 
you know, West Africa. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I drank a lot of water. So it was like 120 that day. And so this bottle of water, we ran out. And so I asked the guy, I said, well, you got any more water? He said, no, nah, we out of water. Ah, right, give me your bottle. I'll put some water. I'll get you some water. So he took this bottle of water and put the hydrant water in it from their country. And I was so excited about getting the water when I got it. I didn't think about popping the top. I just remember getting the water, opening it up, and drinking it. Then I thought about it. Oh, I didn't hear that thing crack. And about I don't know, three hours later, my stomach started. You know, oh, my God. It. And I, I felt really bad for about three days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I even went blind. You know, it was, I mean, that was, that was horrible, boy, you know. So was it yeah, a parasite? I, if I had been in the shape that I was in, I think I probably would have died, you know, but I was in such great shape that I was able right. to fight it off because we had a team doctor. They treated me, got me better, but uh, they got me better to go to Russia, which is, <laughs> the water was even worse there, you know, in Russia. But anyway, I felt good enough to jump again. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Russia, you know, Moscow, we jumped in Lenin's Lenin Square was a Leningrad mm -hmm. and the stadium and I jumped. But anyway, I I felt good that day and I mm -hmm. think I was probably the first American to beat a Russian on Russian territory, you know, so I won the high jump. And so I thought, you know, everything was good and Right. And even though they made you know, Russia you gotta do what Russia say. So they had hundred and four thousand people in the stadium since I beat the Russian high jumper. They set up a table and told me, oh, we need you to sign the autographs. So I signed as many as autographs for about eight hours. They wanted to oh. sign all the uh, you know, autographs. So that was fun. And, uh -huh. and so anyway, after that, I went on. We traveled it all through Europe. And right. I continued to jump. This was like in 72. Okay. 70, yeah, 72. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or 73, somewhere around in there. And I continued to, you know, get better and stronger. Right. But to make the long story short, in 2004, I told my wife, Carol, I said, well, I'm just going to rest because I've been jumping since 67, and I think I'm just going to rest. And mm -hmm. probably that was the wrong thing to do because once I stopped working out, then this virus that was in my system, I guess it came, it was dormant for all that time, and it started, it came out, and, you know, and I started um. swelling up, you know, like in March and April and May. Oh. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. Uh huh. So then I had shortness of breath. We went to the hospital and they said, uh, uh, how long have you had kidney failure? I said, kidney failure? I said, oh, I didn't know I had kidney failure, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they said renal failure or something. But I didn't know yep. what I was talking about. That's what it's called. I had renal failure. So that's when it happened in 04. So, you know, my thing is to keep moving, keep working mm -hmm. out, you know, don't stop. I mean, you can stop, but don't, don't, don't shut it down like I did, you know. Right. And I wasn't just sitting there on the couch. I just wasn't out there running, you know, like I right. was doing and stretching. I was just going to rest that year. But, you know, the key to staying healthy is just moving, you know. Oh. Anyway, I got myself back. I stayed on dialysis for mm -hmm. 04 to 06. I mean, um, yeah, from 04, 04 to 06. And then I told, I was telling my doctors, I, you know, I was telling my, I was asking, how do I get off of dialysis? They said, you don't without a kidney transplant. Oh my goodness. And so I felt so good because I was out there playing basketball again. I got myself back in the shape mm -hmm. and I'm out there running, playing basketball. And the doctor said, you don't get off of dialysis without a transplant. And, but, for some reason, you know, I'm listening to God and doing everything I hear in my, you know, in my ears and head. And I started walking. I got a chair. Every time I got tired, I sat down. So I didn't mm -hmm. do more than I was supposed to. But I told the doctors, I said, well, I'll probably be the first to get off of dialysis without a transplant. And he looked at me and laughed and said, yeah, wishful thinking. But anyway, make a long story short, in 20, I mean, in, yeah, in 06, I got off for eight years. So they started Whoa. scratching their heads, you know, wondering how I got off because when I asked him, how did he know that I wouldn't get off? He said, well, I got your records here and your 
you know, your records show that your blood, your, your kidneys are shot and they're not coming back. Right. I said, really? I said, well, I don't feel what you see. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, that's, that's the truth. So anyway, anyway, I got off the dialysis out of transplant. And so when they decided to take me off of dialysis, uh -huh. I was, I thought maybe, they, you know, we owed them money and they were just kicking us out. <laughs> <laughs> Because we hadn't paid nothing. You know? Well, you can't survive without your kidney. Without so chance, without kit, without uh, dialysis, right? That's and right. I, that's what I was thinking, you know. And I got off two days before Christmas, you know. So it was like the twenty third of December, and mm. I said, "Well, what do I do?" He said, "Well, your kidneys kick back in." And I'm thinking, well, I'm that sure my kidneys they sick. started functioning again. Yeah, they started functioning, you know, um, and filtering. Yeah, so I got off for eight years, you know. That's in, that's um, that's impressive. I just it just so happens I was uh, married. My uh, late husband was di a kidney dialysis. He was a transplant patient, so I know about hemodialysis, perineal dialysis, yeah. all dialysis, kidney transplants, the whole nine. Right. And mm -hmm. for you to say that you um, that your kidneys started working again is right. is literally it's a miracle. It's what it is. And it's not something you 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 rarely ever hear that. That's not something you, know, you hear. Well, they never heard it. Me, that's for sure. That's why he kept telling me wishful thinking. And blah, yeah. Blah, blah. Oh yeah. You know, I think having that confidence, and we know who's in charge, God, of course. You know. Yeah. And I'm listening to him. You know, giving me all these messages and what to mm -hmm. do, what not to do, and I followed the orders. And, you know, and, and I was out there walking again. You know, so uh -huh. I got my body back into condition. You know, oh. because a lot of times when people are on dialysis, all they do is go in, they go to dialysis, they come back, and they take the fluid off of you. So it yeah. got to the point where they wasn't taking any fluid. And they asked me, are you eating? I said, yeah. But I was walking and burning it off. When I found out right. I could sweat it out, right? then I said, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. And I kept doing it. Oh, my and, goodness. And, and everything just started working again, you know, just working oh. out. And I'm, I'm, and I'm telling people, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying do this. Right. I'm just saying whatever you feel you want to do, you can right. do. And I felt up to it, you know. That's, so that's excellent. I because well, I, I, tell you. I was laying in bed or sitting, and I kept hearing this voice saying, Ray, you're not a sitter. You're not, you know, get up and move. And I kept saying, well, I don't feel like moving. And my head was saying, my head and body was saying, you do feel like moving, move, get up. So I got up and and some said, grab a chair. When you get tired, sit down. And I did that. Um, I was able to, you know, throw my chair away in about a month or two, you know. And mm -hmm. I was walking again. My wife, she was wondering uh, why I wasn't, you know, breathing hard and all that. Because she was working and I was supposed to be at home just sitting, you know. I, mm -hmm. I didn't want to sit. Right. And uh, then I had to break the news to her. I was out working out, stretching and whatever. And she got upset. You're going to kill yourself. I said, no, yeah. I'm not. I said, I'm doing everything easy. I'm not doing a half. I'm only doing a fourth. Right, a fourth right. Do, you know? But she was and worried that something. Tired, you know? Yeah, but she was worried something may happen to you. Yeah, right. We have um, yeah, Elaine Wilson said, it's such an honor to see you here, Olympians. Your Olympian story, Mr. Brown. We also have Gwendolyn. She says, uh, that's a kidney miracle. Praise the Lord. That's what she said. And Elaine says, my Sigma Gamma Rho sorority members have made history too. Marta McClendon was the first black to win a medal in swimming. Natalie Hines made her first swimming Olympic team 100 free this past week. Also, one of your friends sent me a message Gail Harris sent me a message. She te texted me earlier and said she used to work out with you, I think. Yeah. yeah. Gail Harris did. So, Gail, I want, and I, so Gail said she loves the show and she watches it. So I want to make sure I announce her too. Yeah, hi, Gail. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you for these comments. I'm telling you because um, what you're really doing is showing us that this matters, that it matters who we really acknowledge people right here in our communities. Mm -hmm. We didn't, we didn't, I mean, Mr. Brown's in our community. This is a community person. And he also, he has a foundation. Did you like to tell the audience about your foundation, Mr. Brown? Yeah, it's called the Ronaldo Brown uh, Youth Foundation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had this uh, foundation since, what, 93. 
Right. But I've been so busy, you know, I've been trying to put mine together. As a matter of fact, it lapsed a couple of times. And I had to bring it back up. But I've been so busy with the Olympic Committee. They've had me doing a lot of things with them because, they, you know, they do tons of stuff with kids. And they send you, they send me all over the place, you know, mm-hmm, here mm-hmm. and there to work with kids. And, and you know, since they pay, okay, I'll go, you know. And so I didn't get a chance to really get my foundation off the ground like I really wanted to. But, I right. mean, it's, you know, I got all the paperwork and everything is good. You know, I'm still in good standing with you mm-hmm. know, IRS and all that. Right. But I'm waiting, you know, and I think right now, sometime this year or next year, I'll get mine, you know, working with kids as soon as I can, you know, get some funding in it, you know, and, uh, okay. and what have you. But I'm doing so much. And then I, you know, like I said, I was doing a lot of things with the Special Olympics. And okay. then other people, all general people would just call me and say, come here. Come right. Here. And I was doing all these track clinics and what have you. So, you know, I was pretty busy, you know, and uh, and they were still working with kids, you know. So yeah, in other words, you have it hasn't have been my a good... foundation that I want to, you know, do and, and mm-hmm. get, you know get get kids involved in my, you know, my program too. But every time I get ready to get started, and I get called for some other stuff, you know, and I love working with them because you know. I remember, you know, like the coaches and the people that worked with me to get me mm-hmm. started. You know that that touched my heart, and I just want to give back. So if somebody called me, I'm going. I'm coming. Yeah. Well, that's that's what you did for me. You said <laughs> <laughs> when I called, he's like, "Okay, when do you want to do it?" <laughs> thank you. Oh yes, we want to thank you. I mean, and thank you for giving back because everybody doesn't give back. You know, I thought everybody did, but I've I've so I found out that's not the case. But I'm not I don't want to say anything negative. Everybody has to do what's right for them. Let me uh, say that. Yeah. And there is no, you know, there's no way to say where people because people are at different places in life. People are their caregivers, they have other responsibilities. So I don't want to try to diminish anyone. Um, right. but I do want to I did I was adding this banner on here. Um it was a message. If you're interested in being a guest on the show, let me put that on there. If you're interested in being a guest on the show, you have to, you not have to, you can call my assistant. Her name is Jocelyn at this number listed. For those of you that say, you know what? I'd like to be on the show. I'd like to be a guest. I have information and I'm actually going to be doing some shows that'll have two people. And this is my quick commercial for those of you <laughs> that are interested. I just want to make sure I said that before the show came to an end, but I do want to say this. Uh, Mr. Brown, as I said before, we started, we are, we really, really appreciate you. I know that you are doing this out of your love for it, but like it or not, you are always representing um, African-Americans. There's no way around it. That's, you are going to represent. And like you said before, what was going on in, uh, in Mexico City. But even now, even when you're volunteering or wherever you are in the world, you will always have the title as an Olympian, and you always represent the Olympic team and every in the Olympic committee wherever you go. So we do want to, to say thank you for that and and uh, being such a positive influence to. And, and, I mean, your daughter coming on and saying, "Hi, Dad." I want everybody to know that's my daddy. You know, <laughs> I saw that, Tracy. Don't think I ignored that. I saw that. Tra- <laughs> that says a lot. So we just want to honor you and say thank you for all that you do, um, all that you're doing for the community, all that you're doing for young people. Um, And I so admire you, like you said, for going through everything with your kidneys. You did have eventually have a kidney transplant, correct? Yeah, I got it in 2016. Yes. Okay. All right. That's it. That's saying. I know then that would would mean you're on on some, um, some of the medication to make sure the kidney keeps functioning. Right. Uh, so you're taking care of yourself, I'm sure, sir. Yes, yes. Oh, that's right. good. That's excellent. And we want to just thank you. Like I said, even with all that, you're still giving back. Even with all that, you still find time. Some people would sit back and say, um, okay, that's it. You're not doing that. You're no, still no, involved. Yeah, <laughs> something, in my, something in my body saying that you got to move. You got to keep moving. So that's, yeah. that's me. Just move. You know. All right. And uh, Gwendolyn said, thank you for the chat today. You're welcome. Always good to see you, Gwen. Always. 
And Tracy says, laugh out loud. Our family is very proud. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Tracy. I can't imagine you not being anything but proud of your dad. <laughs> but she wants to make sure we all know. And I, I know the feeling. I wish my father was here. Unfortunately, he has passed on. Um, so, but I understand what it is to be proud of your father, right? Because I'm definitely proud of mine. So I know that feeling for sure. But we, like I said, we want to tell you, thank you. And that you, um, your, that if someone wants to get in contact with you, is there a number they can call? I'll put the number in the chat. Oh, for me, yeah. Um, that, my, my uh, email, you got my email. It's uh, rbr o w. Forty-eight five five six at aol.com. Okay, forty-eight five five six at aol. I'm mean, gonna put this. Those of you that would like to contact, you can give a. Here, let me put. I didn't put your name next to it. Let me put. Uh, hold on. There we go. So those of you that are interested in contacting him, please do so. Mr. Brown. Okay, there, I put it like that. So there's the email, let me make sure, there you go. Did I get that correctly? Yes. Okay, so if you wanna contact him about, um, I, I say anything with the Olympics, he, he's very, when I say knowledgeable, there's not too much he doesn't know about with the Olympics, but also, when you, you're saying that the, the Olympics offers, which I wasn't aware of, is different types of activities for children. Um, I think that's something, if you're interested, people may be interested in knowing about that, if there's activities for kids. Um, also, if you email me flyers or anything going on that's local or virtual, please let us know. I'm definitely one to email it out. I, I don't know if you get my emails or not. Um, to the, to let the community know, because I I feel that people can't participate unless they know what's going on. Yeah. So LA eighty four is a it's a program called LA eighty four, and they do a lot of things with the kids, you know, and different chat clubs, and they put on a lot of events. Is that a and is they, that a dot com? In nineteen eighty four, when the games were here in uh, eighty four. Is that LA eighty four dot com? Yes. Okay, dot, I think it's dot, dot org. Okay. Or dot org, one of the two. Or dot org. Okay, I'm going to put both of them in there. Yeah. So you can, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you're interested in getting 84 dot, dot, uh, org, I don't, we don't know which one it is, but there. Yeah, I'll put that up also. Here we go. There we go. So if you are interested in finding out what's going on, oops, well, there's both of them together. Yeah. We don't know if it's a dot com or dot org. It could be, we just don't know. So, but if you're interested in participating, or, it is a dot org. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can change that out then. I'll do LA84.org. Here we go. There. Let's see if there you go. There you go. And you can go online and find out how you can get involved or how you can get your children or grandchildren involved. I mean, there's so in many of the things, if I'm not mistaken, are free, aren't they? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. OK, so you have an opportunity to get to get involved in it at no cost to you. So any last comments before we go? What, what if I tell you I have a 10 year old and they're interested and they want to be Olympian? What would you tell that 10 year old? I'll tell that 10 year old to just get involved with, with a leader, you know, a coach or somebody that knows about the event and they can guide them, you know, just like I did when, you know, cause that's when I started about 10, mm -hmm. I got, you know, before I got to junior high school, but when I got to junior high school, it was already a coach there, Jim Newman, you know, and he knew mm -hmm. himself about, you know, sports. Right. And he trained me. And all I did was just listen and, mm. you know, you know, argue about how hard it was or uh, whatever, you know, if right. he, it, if he was going to tell me to do something, it was the right thing to do. Just okay. like my parents taught me, you know, growing up. You know, right. Do what we say do. We're not going to tell you to do anything 
crazy. That's wrong. Right. You know, so right. We, well, we like know, to so thank I, you. I just I'm and, sorry. Uh, observe and did it. You know, but okay. just get with a, just get with someone that can lead, can take you to where you want to go, and then oh, just right. continue to, uh, you know, be like a relay. They just hand you off to somebody else, or maybe that same coach will keep keep what mm -hmm. people with you. Okay. Yeah. We like to thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Brown, for coming on the show. My sincere apologies for spelling your name wrong, because that was definitely charged to my head and not my heart. Um, but we do appreciate you coming out today and spending time with us. Um, we honor you today with not only being an Olympian, but being a wonderful father to your children, too. And after how many years marriage? Almost 40 years with your wife? Yeah, 38 years. 38 years. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the, the our show for today. I just want to thank each and every one of you for coming out. We'll be back again next Monday. And I can tell you right now, it's going to be an exciting guest. <laughs> so look for the commercial. The commercial comes out either Thursday or Friday. Uh, usually myself and the person comes on and we spend about a minute telling you about what you can expect on Monday. Thank you again. I enjoy each and every one of you and I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye, everybody.